God, everybody, and welcome to today's broadcast. We're so glad that you joined us. Today, we got something very exciting to share with you, and that is we're going to be talking about relationships. You're going to get to see myself, along with Pastor Cheryl, share some powerful wisdom, nuggets of wisdom that will enhance your relationship and cause you to go into the more of what God has for you. No relationship should be a failure. But they are because we don't know how to apply the principles of the kingdom. In this series, your life is going to be blessed. So let's go into this now. Amen. And then God planted what was needed to produce what he wanted. What are you planting in your relationship? Especially husbands and wives. Yeah. You know, there's the deposit side. And there's the withdrawal side. If you, if one of you is making all of the deposits and the other one, all they get is withdrawals, it's not going to be a happy relationship at all. Because after a while, the person that's doing all the depositing is going to get tired. And it's just, the relationship is not going to work. So, uh, what, what, give me an example of some deposits that you make into my life on the regular. Well, quite honestly, I don't think they're mature enough to handle this. Come on, honey. <laughs> One is simple things. Um, I call simple, but they're not necessarily um, I make sure that I'm the one that opens the door for her and all the time. All the time. And the, um, I celebrate when you find something that you like, be it some clothes or whatever. Uh, I, I try to study you. We started that early on. To I, see what, I started what, trying what, to figure out I, because we didn't know each other. You can be done dating somebody three, five years and you don't know them until you start living with them as a husband or a wife. So I made it my business. I made it a priority <clears throat> to find out what he liked, find out the colors. He did the same thing with me. What was my favorite this and that? One thing I told him early on is, I don't like flowers. Don't give me flowers. Now, when I worked at the bank, I wanted flowers. Because honestly. Yeah, here's, here's why. Because I was like, okay, wait a minute. You tell me you don't want no flowers. But you want me to bring you some flowers at the job. How crazy little stuff at that. That's so the other women will know. Well, see, I didn't, I didn't know that. That my man loved me. That was for them. That wasn't for me. See, that, that's when I turned. That's when I went and got my, my turntable and I put it on it. <laughs> do, 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 do. Lay in your game, babe. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, this is a game. Uh-huh. And I thought, ah. Oh. Because I realized I was naive about a lot of things concerning women. Did y'all know people go around talking about, that's my cousin? You better go check that cousin. Oh. So I got flowers. And it doesn't have to be that special occasion. What? Just go in. Hey, how you doing? Da, da, da. For me, yeah. 
I'll talk to you later. Go out. Because I know what it's doing. <laughs> you get in your car and you leave. When you pull out onto the street, hit that button for that car to just walk. <laughs> Lean on your armrest and when folks go by him. I did that. <laughs> it's a deposit. I set goals. Lord, I want to give my wife $500. Just give it to her. So I, I release my faith for $500. $500 show up. It might come $100. Put it up. I ain't putting it up. I'm waiting on the fire. <laughs> it came five times. I got it. Here. What's this for? You. Really? Oh. She, she goes to get her hair done, get her nails done, her lashes. Oh, that's a good girl. Every time. And it's like, wow. What seed are you sowing in the relationship? I want to throw this. Why are you saying that? These deposits into me make me feel a certain type of way. They make me I, They make me feel a certain way. Listen, somebody can tell you they love you all day long, but it's about the way you make them feel. The way you make Somebody me ought to feel. clap your hands on that one. Not all my feet. No. Feel like Ain't a nobody did that. Natural woman. Yeah. Like, my, like, like our granddaughter, she said, they did that, Papa. <laughs> so I'm telling y'all, I did that. So did even that. Uh, women with your, with your mate, your husband, it's about the way you make him feel. Your words can make him, your tone can make him feel in a way that you can't get anything out of him. It's, it's the way you make him feel. I make him a priority. I've always done that. I did that from day one. That was in the laying the foundation. And it's not to impress other folks. Mm -mm. It's not, not a flower thing, y'all. Yeah, that know was. That, that it was. really was. <laughs> then when I left the bank, I was like, you don't have to do that no more. <laughs> I'm done with that. You know, I really don't care for flowers. <laughs> Just give me the money. <laughs> Buy my favorite cologne. Yeah. You know, if you, you know what, we, we were talking to a couple one time. We were counseling this couple. Yeah, I'll get the questions. At least we can get a couple of them. Yeah, yeah. We, we run out of time. But um, we were talking to this couple, and the, the man, well, the woman came to me, and she said, he's going to buy me x and x and x and she said i have told him that i don't like neither one of those things it was like for their anniversary and he told her you ought to be glad for whatever i give you if i want to give it to you if i want to spend my money on that you should be glad well guess what that wasn't making a deposit because she didn't get what she wanted it's like he didn't even hear what she was saying Here's the thinking. I spent. And in his mind, that's a deposit. The reason it's a problem is because no communication. When you don't communicate, and I'm not talking about just talking. You have to, uh, you have to sit, you have to even ask, do you know what I like? Or tell me, what do you like? You'd be amazed that folks don't even know what they like. Well, I just know that ain't it. Well, what, what is it? I don't know. But that ain't it. Okay. Somebody's going to get frustrated in that. Like, I ain't getting you nothing. Yeah. <laughs> and then forget, you forgot our money. anniversary. Uh-huh. And I'm going to forget the birthday. I'm going to forget Christmas. All that. 
<laughs> now you got folks offended. Y'all bring me the question. Give me one of something. Y'all getting anything? Yes, yes. Now, I hope this ain't, uh, uh, can we go to Mars and come back and come back? I don't know why. I'm Maybe we should have. He have to take his off. I had to put mine on. <laughs> you going to do yours? Why won't you do You going to do All righty. You're going to have to help me, though. Okay. How do you deal with a parent who always places a grip trip on you or is always negative? Ooh. When you confront them about it, their answer is, I'm just telling the truth. Well, uh, if the person say they're just telling the truth, <clears throat> the book of Ephesians says that we are to speak the truth in chapter uh, uh, 4. It says, speaking the truth in love whereby we may grow. You can speak the truth and have no love attached to it, and it will be abrasive like parts in an engine rubbing together. Um, the... Um, if, if you feel like you're on, the, if you're on the receiving end of that, you got to learn to pray, Lord, deal with this. Because if it's a, a child-parent relationship, you don't want to get out of order. But one of the things the enemy does is uses somebody else's pain, somebody else's, uh, what has happened to them, uh, be it the enemy caused it or it's a, a family dysfunction or whatever, uh, if you never had positives coming up, you're not going to be giving them out more than likely unless you have a change of heart. You'll just pass on whatever. But you have to ask the, ask the Holy Spirit, help my parents. My kids had to do me like that. They said, Daddy, you're negative. No, I'm not. But I had to back up and the Lord started dealing with me. And I, I began to listen to my words and look at how I was, what I was doing, <clears throat> I was taking my frustrations in life out on my girls in a number of ways. You know, they'd be like, Dad, let's just talk. <clears throat> I don't talk, talk. <clears throat> well, Dad, let's watch this movie. I ain't watching no girly movie. <laughs> come on, Daddy, come on. And the Holy Spirit said, you got time for other stuff. So I sat down and watched it. That's when Driving Miss Daisy came out. Not Driving Miss Daisy, Fried Green Tomatoes. About middle ways, I was crying. <laughs> then I was mad. Dad, I was mad because it got me crying. They're they breaking, me, breaking me down. I'm trying to hold up. I'm, I'm a man. But the Lord showed me how my words had been very negative. Wow. So I had to go to them and repent. Please forgive me. <laughs> Parents, did y'all know <clears throat> it ain't going to kill you to repent to your children? Amen. 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 That's a relationship. You got to communicate. And, can and do we understand what each other is saying? You know, just because they're a child, I mean, you ain't got nothing to say. Yes, they do. Well, um, it depends on the parent. It depends <clears throat> on the child. It depends on how the parent is. So you need the wisdom of God uh, to be able to address it. You need to be able to say, well, when you, I can receive the truth, but if you say it in a certain tone, it hurts me. It comes across as negative. It makes me feel bad. So, you know, hopefully you, you, you have the type of parent you can kind of dialogue it and talk about it. Sometimes because of the damage of the parent, they don't realize that they're hurting you. They do not realize how abrasive that they are. They're only thinking about driving home their point. They may not uh, be at a certain spiritual level where they can understand about Speaking the truth and love, they might not be in an environment where they even being taught the truth like you are. So if they're not, then uh, some things are lawful but not expedient. And what I mean, some things you can't even say 
uh, I think over in Proverbs it talks about uh, with uh, holding your peace even from the good because it's not going to do any good. So you have to resolve within yourself that I'm going to be okay with my parents. That I'm not going to let that offense or the way they are because you're not going to be able to change them. You're not going to be able to change them, so ask God for grace if you can't talk it out. Because everything you really can't resolve. So you just have to ask God for grace to still love beyond where your parent is, how they talk, and just, just move on with, to love them where they are. Now, it does also say when you confront them, oh. that's another, it can be an issue because okay. it can be uh, viewed, what's being said is being Challenge. viewed as negative, and then when you confront, just the word confront has combative attached to it. Yeah. And the moment a, a, a child is going to yeah. confront a parent, yeah. <laughs> make sure you got your papers right with heaven. <laughs> When Brought I was you in this up, world and yep. take you out. Yep. My mother used to do this. And I didn't know what that meant until I got saved. Because she, she would say, I'm going to take your head off your body. And I just think. And she said it with such authority. And then I found out that was scriptural. That's what David told Goliath. Take your head off your body. And he did it. Amen. And it's like, okay, I know if... if <laughs> If David could do it, this woman can do it too. Okay, let's take this one. I firmly believe that trust is necessary to strengthen, grow, and sustain any relationship. How can trust be restored when it is lost in a relationship, especially a marriage? Can it be restored? Yes, it can. But remember, marriage a marriage is two people. Uh, man and woman. <laughs> Clear that one, okay? Uh, you got to want... Come to, get the church, we, you can't adopt the changing trends in society and say, well, that's what God accepts. That No, if God didn't start out that way, then just stick to the script. But it can be restored, but the both of you have to want it. Not just want it. You got to be willing to go back and together clean up the rubble, haul it off, let the Spirit of God show you the assessment that has to be made. You got to look at how did this even happen? How did this over here happen? And you both have to be responsible for it because you're going to have to rebuild that. It doesn't happen like this. It's kind of like someone who was, who was caught. Uh, they, they stepped outside the marriage and, and in an adulterous relationship and then it's like, well, you know, everybody, everybody doing it. Well, that's an insult to injury. And then, okay, well, I'm, I, I broke it off, you know, it's over with. Okay, good. Uh, come here, honey. Don't, don't touch me. See, that's what I'm talking about. Wait a minute, you did all this damage. And you think, because you said, well, you know, uh, I said I'm sorry. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. So, you know, if you're going to rebuild, it takes longer rebuilding. And most just want it like that. So you both have to be committed to, um, uh, for things being restored. And trust is not developed overnight. It's not developed. And I, I mentioned this at the beginning, but I'm going to throw this word out again. You got to let the Spirit of God check your heart and make sure there's no corruption in your heart. Because corruption is going, you're going you'll, you'll be shady. You'll tell a little lie. You have to be willing. I'm, I'm dropping all of that. I start back with the Lord. Lord, how do I handle this woman? How do I handle this man? Holy Spirit, teach us how to build this. Give us your plan. And then bring the plan to him. When y'all have sat down and discussed it, where are we going? What do we want? Most folks don't even know what they want out of life. And they don't even talk about it. 
We just, yeah, we just been, we been married for 35 years. I've been married to the same woman for 35 years, but she was miserable for 34 and a half. <laughs> I put a roof over your head. She could have stood on the bridge and, and the rain didn't hit her. You know what I'm saying? So just cause daddy and uncles and everybody else did this, you know, that's the way they, that's the way they did they, they women. They, you know, they told them, you, you don't do nothing until I say so. I'm the man. You got it twisted. You didn't see Adam doing that. Hello. Actually, God gave her to Adam to help him. He the one that needed help. Say that. But if you don't keep that balance, then it'll go, women rule. That nope. ain't what God said. Nope. We know people that they spend, there are men that spend their life, their marital life, trying to dominate their wife so they'll feel good about themselves. There are women that spend their marital life trying, trying to, to dominate the man. Mm -hmm, trying to control. Driven by something else, and that something else is not love. So if it's going to be restored, you got to go back. And there's a whole lot of that stuff that's got to be jackhammered out or the rubble taken out and you got to show up everything, and let's, let's do it again. And but then, if you know, so that means accountability. Yep. And if somebody has stepped outside of the relationship, now you don't want, I'll just use the man, he stepped out, and uh, now you don't want the woman asking you where you're going. Well, see, I can't live like this. <laughs> yeah, but you destroyed the trust. So he's the one. That's going to have to the be. The burden. Yeah. A rebuilding, that aspect is on him. So you got to be accountable. You got to tell everybody where you're going, what you're going to do, what time right. you're going to get there, what time you're coming home. <laughs> you got to provide proof. <laughs> but see, if, if, there, if you don't sit down and talk about things, get to share your feelings, and when you talk about stuff that's painful, don't try to do it all in one, one sitting. Because you're going to be mad as all get out. If you got to eat an elephant, and you already had a plate of spaghetti. You ain't going to get but a couple of bites in. So do the couple of bites. And let's agree we're going to come back maybe tomorrow. Or you set a time. We're going to come back and we're going to deal with, address something else. Or come back to this that we didn't finish. It is an issue. It's not the relationship. Make sure this is an issue. Our goal is we're going to build, rebuild the trust. But it's going to require talking. It's going to require, I mean, communication. It's going to require honesty. And if you've been hiding, it's going to hurt to be honest. Because it's going to make you vulnerable. God couldn't have a relationship with Adam and Eve without the risk of them turning against him. Otherwise, it ain't, it ain't love. it's not a love relationship. You always run, love always runs the risk of getting hurt. Ninth grade, I went to a social. <laughs> Y'all remember that? Social. Finally let the, out the house, Uncle Frankie. Mom said, you ain't going nowhere. Yeah, I'm out there and play with them kids. No. Oh. All my friends drive, they go by, and I'm outside playing with the little kid. They laugh. Go to the social. It's a girl named, I ain't going to call her name. I liked her. That was my girlfriend. Don't tell her name. Tell her name. I can't tell it. It was one of them things where you be done slipped a note, yes or no. <laughs> In the ninth grade. They got uh, get to the little dance, and one of the friends said, man, she back over there in the corner with this, uh, with this other guy. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, you lying. I'm trying to, you know, because, you know, it's back in the day when the young fellas, they ain't had no mustache, but they wanted one. They had peach fuzz. So you get, you sneak in the mascara and slip it on you. <laughs> 
walk around like you got you got a mustache. It was always somebody at church say, "What's that on your lip?" <laughs> Walked around and saw for myself, and it's like somebody took a butcher knife <laughs> and ripped my heart out. Nobody told me that you can get your heart broken in life or ripped out your chest cavity. They said, boy, one day you're going to fall in love. Well, praise God. I know that blessed you tremendously, and there's much more to come. Pastor Cheryl has a whole lot rolling on the inside of her, and the Spirit of God is really sharing some things that will bless your life tremendously. We want you to stay tuned because as we go through uh, these truths about relationship, we want you to know that yours is going to go off the chart, not in a bad way, but in a good way. Amen. Listen, before we leave, we want to pray for you. I pray in the name of Jesus that everybody listening, that their relationship will get a fresh spark from the power of God and that every relationship will get on track to bring glory and honor to your name, Father. And we believe this and we receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, don't forget, we're going to be sharing more about relationships, so be sure to stay tuned. We really enjoy coming uh, by means of TV to share the Word of God with you, and God's Word is not just about having a good sermon. He's interested in every area of your life. He's causing us to go all over this state and this region to minister the Word of God. You can help us by becoming a partner. Consider doing that and you'll help us tremendously. We appreciate you very much, and we'll see you next time for more of the Heart of the Ideal Servant. Thank you for joining us for the Heart of a Servant, an outreach ministry of Canaan Christian Center in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. If you are in the Pine Bluff area, we'd love for you to join us on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m., for our United Prayer on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. and for our midweek service on Wednesday night at 7. We would also like to give a special thank you to all of our covenant partners. If you are interested in becoming a covenant partner, please visit our website or send us an email. We are Canaan Christian Center, praying that you have the heart of the ideal servant.